Good afternoon, my name is Tom, and today's video is kind of about how to manage increased costs due to bird flu. According to uh, multiple news reports, which aren't really catching a lot of uh, attention due to other circumstances, the bird flu season this year is um, just terrible and millions upon millions of birds have to be culled. The virus has also uh, jumped the gap over to beef and pork. And uh, according to an NPR report I overheard Friday last week, uh, there have been three human cases. Now, risk to humans is low. It's not something that we need to worry about. However, with all this livestock that has to be culled, that means meat prices go up. Uh, chicken being a primary staple, well, maybe you're used to buying um, $3 to $4 chicken breast uh, on the bone, and now it's going to be like seven and a half, eight dollars $8. You know, it's like the price is going up for this, and this is already on top of last year's bird flu costs. And on top of that, you have COVID price gouging. So what I have always done to lower the cost of buying chicken for myself is I buy my birds whole and butcher them. And for the longest time, I was able to buy free range birds, which made me happy mostly because I think even livestock animals deserve a decent uh, quality of life. Um, but, you know, we're at that point now where it's like, yeah, I'm just going to buy the uh, store brand uh, factory farm birds until further notice because don't really have much choice. I'm not a, I'm not a rich man. So over the years, I've used many knives. When I first learned how to butcher a bird, it was with turkeys and... Uh, and I wasn't really sure, I was just kind of figuring it out as I went, and I went back and forth between this guy, this guy, and this paring knife, until I figured out what worked best for me. In the end, the paring knife, I figured it would be great for detail work, but you know what, it's just not getting the job done. Your basic eight inch kitchen knife. Too big, not maneuverable enough. It was too cumbersome. So this little six inch Santaku was actually near perfect uh, for butchering. Um, it's got enough heft. It's small enough to have maneuverability. It can still cleave if you need to cleave. Eventually though, my wife uh, picked up a nice flexible filleting knife for me. And that's actually perfect. And while it doesn't have the heft for uh, a heavy chop, uh, you really don't need it if you find the joints and you just glide right through them. Now before butchering, you always want to sharpen your knives. And there's a lot of cleaning first. Like I've completely cleaned off this counter and then gone over it with rubbing alcohol. It's disinfected, everything's clean. Uh, I stropped up my knives, they got a nice, uh, scary sharp edge i never put a scary sharp edge on anything except my kitchen knives um for the most part i find that degree of edge is a waste of time but for kitchen purposes you want it and then you have to wash your knives so that they're uh not going to have metal particulate or polish i'm going to put the santaku away and do this entirely with the fillet knife I've also cleaned and disinfected the sink. When we're done, we have to clean and disinfect everything again because chicken spreads uh, salmonella. All right, so the bird goes in the, the bird in the bowl goes into the sink. We're just trying to contain as much mess as possible. We're going to cut it out of its bag using our crazy sharp uh, knife containing as much liquid as possible because we don't want it splattering everywhere we don't want it getting everywhere 
we like to have our stuff nice and contained. Alrighty, the bird is free of the plastic mostly. It is a big fat bird. Now I was able to purchase this at $1.69 a pound which is kind of a lot for some uh, folks when it comes to buying a whole bird but you know not too bad. Reach inside check for giblets there isn't many in here but we do have the chicken neck and that has a lot of cartilage in it even if it has, doesn't have meat that we want my two ba storage bags are labeled we're keeping the skeleton including the neck because that's going to make really good chicken stock I meant to zoom in for this part before I touch the raw chicken well, I screwed that up. So we're just going to move the bird over here. How's that look? Beautiful. All right. We're going to flip it so that the wings are up. Step one is removing the wings. Now I pull it away from the body like this, and I can see I got a nice curve here at the end of the wing to follow. I can feel with my thumb. The joint is connected right there. So the goal is to get your knife in between the bones of that joint. You have your wig. Now we're going to set this up as like a griller pack and a stock pack. For stock, the wing tip well, there's not much for you to eat there anyway, so I like to throw that in the stock pot because it's full of cartilage. So I find my joint, and I start my cut like this, but I'm cutting towards my hand, which is dangerous. So I just start the cut, slip it in between the joint, and then just lay it out and come right through. And it goes into the bag. You got to be really careful with those moments where the knife is headed towards you. And never complete a cut like that. Ever. Now I've got my joint here so if I want to split this up like buffalo wings, you know, you just feel it. And you can, you can split it up like buffalo wings if you want. I'm going to leave this as is. It'll be fine. And now I'll take the other wing. Again, I follow, I find that curve, and I follow it with my knife. I split right between the joint. I find my joint here. I start the cut, but I do not finish the cut. Looks like I caught a little bit of the second bone got through the first. All right, that goes into the skeleton bag. This goes into the griller pack bag. Then we flip it breast side up. I like to do the legs now, leg and thigh. So we slice into that skin there to just kind of separate the leg and thigh from the breast and you see there's membrane here that we are gently cutting and we're just cutting the skin and the membrane we're not we're trying not to cut the meat yet okay so now I'm back to um, the spine being upright again and there's more meat here which is part of the thigh so now we're gonna follow that bit of meat okay we cut into the meat, got to the bone. We turn the leg, popping the bone out of the hip. And that gives us a nice, easy place to follow with our knife instead of trying to cut through cartilage and bone. Okay, now here's the tricky one. Find in this joint if you want to separate your leg and thigh. But it feels like it's right there to me. So again, do not complete the cut going towards your hand. Find the spot, and then lay it out and cut towards the board. 
protect your hands. Do not get yourself sliced, especially when you've stropped up your knife to the point where it's basically a razor blade on a handle. Gently slice the skin separate and the membrane separating the leg from the breast. Get down to where it ends. There's that last little bit of meat. Slice around towards the joint. Okay, we found the joint. Pop it out of the socket. There you go. Got to find our joint. Start the cut. Lay it out. Finish the cut going towards your cutting board. Bone goes into the, uh, I mean, sorry, leg and thigh goes into your griller pack bag. Now, the breasts. Find your keel bone, the sternum basically. Now you have to hold on to the chicken as you start, and we're going to use that keel bone as a shield to protect our fingers as we start our cut. I'm going to start on the far side of the keel bone. This is the part that, um, requires patience and practice. You're going to be a little bit rough at first. And that's fine. And we're just using gentle pressure. It's mostly the weight of the knife that's performing this cut. I'm not I'm not uh, pressing hard here. I'm letting the knife do the work. There you go. That is a nearly perfectly butchered chicken breast with chicken tender. If you want, you can separate the tenders and cook them separately. And I think I will. And yes, the tender is the, um, I'll think of it as like a tenderloin, but on a chicken. Um, it's that one large muscle that separates from the underside of the breast. All right, now back to the other breast. Use the skeleton as the shield for my fingers. Identify where the keel bone is. Start your slice. Okay, now we're gonna get our fingers out of there. And use that to just keep pulling the muscle back away, separating the muscle from the skeleton as we go. If you have to change angle, go right ahead. It's vitally important that you take your time, watch what you're doing. And for this, especially as you're learning, many light cuts for the breast meat is a lot better than a heavy slice in, which will end up um, leaving half of the chicken breast stuck to the skeleton, you know. And you will make that mistake every now and again. That's okay. But the idea is to, um, you know, try to go for full, solid pieces. You know, not lose anything more than you have to as you do this. Now, oh yeah, so you can see on the camera, once again, I'm going to separate the chicken tender. It's this muscle from the underside of the breast. You can see how it kind of sits there naturally. But you grab it with your thumb, pull it up, and you basically just have to sever the connective tissue holding it to the chicken breast. And now I have a chicken tender.
and my chicken breast. Now for my stock bed. And what I do with my stock is uh, I basically take my skeleton, whatever seasonings I want, salt, vegetables. I put it in a crock pot and let it go on low for like eight to ten hours or high for six. And you could go much longer if you want and some people do. But uh, let's see, to fit it in the bag more easily I like to slice in there until I get to that rib cage. I just kind of bend it back, uh, separating part of the spine, and I slice the rest of the way through. Well, we had a rib kind of stuck there that didn't separate. That's okay. And now both of these pieces will fit easily into my skeleton bag. You'll notice I overfolded the top of the bags so that my raw chicken's not hitting the outside. And there you have it. That's how you butcher an entire chicken. Now, if you'll excuse me for a couple of seconds, I'm going to soap the heck out of my hands and then end the video. And it's worth noting, you can't touch that uh, dish detergent bottle or soap bottle without contaminating the outside. So you do have to wash your soap bottle when you're done. Okay, so there you have it. Um, the entire counter needs to be decontaminated, same with the sink. What I like to do is I soap everything up with uh, dish detergent, uh, rinse it all off, and then I like to uh, spray everything down with rubbing alcohol to sanitize it. Basically, the soap will kill most of everything. Uh, rubbing alcohol of 60% or greater concentration will kill 99.9% .9 of uh, everything that uh, anything microbial so that's uh, really good when it comes to bacterial and viral things and uh, you know there you go that's that's it and that's actually gonna save you a lot of money instead of buying leg and thigh for four dollars and breast for six and a half dollars a pound you can buy the whole bird at uh, you know a dollar sixty nine a pound and make your own stock and that will mitigate some of the problems we discussed earlier with bird flu and uh, deliberate price gouging and inflation and all that stuff thank you have a good day